For today's class, it would be good if you had either a bolster or two bed pillows. Similarly, if you don't have those items, if you don't have a bolster or anything like that and you don't want to go get bed pillows, you can do the poses without them. You don't need them. It's a suggestion. Um, this class starts off a little bit gentler and slower and we take a little bit more time. So being supported can feel really good. And then later on, if you do end up using the props, it's more optional. If you've got a yoga brick as well, that will be handy because we can change the elevation of these props. If not, again, don't worry if you don't have those things. To start with, we're going to start lying down. You can either lay down flat on your back or I find a little bit of an angle for pranayama is good. So either setting up your bolster so that it is at your lower back and letting the head rest with the arms down by the sides, palms up or you can work with the legs straight towards the front of the mat, or maybe you're laying flat down, or even the bolster without the block will still give you an element of chest opening. So from where you are, do any little movements that can help you be more comfortable. So drawing the shoulder blades down away from the ears, tucking the chin to help lengthen the back of the neck. And if you've got like a buckwheat bolster, so frequently they're filled with that, you can kind of push it around a little bit to create different shapes if you need different levels of support. Close your eyes. For now, simply guide your attention inwards. So making that our second act, we've assumed a shape with the aim of being steady. And now the attention starts to go inwards. Begin to consciously recruit your breath. Ideally doing an inhale for a count of five and an exhale for a count of seven. In this class, it's good to use Ujjayi breathing, which is still doing the same count, but engaging the throat muscles so there's an audible sound to your breath. So bring that in. If you're used to Ujjayi being attached to really vigorous practices, this isn't going to be a massively vigorous class, but you can still bring in that sound. So it adds another dimension to your breath to help you guide your awareness. Now, without knowing what your other practices are, this practice should be done with a lens to be softer than perhaps what your other practices are, with the assumption that your other practices are strong. So if you know that you tend to start off your week with something fiery, let this be a calmer exploration, a way for you to assess what your needs are for the week ahead, what your needs are in the immediate moment. So as you breathe deeply with that whisper sound, getting that count very full and very thorough, ask internally, what do you need right now? And it's not going to be like biscuits and tea. It's going to be like, what do you need out of today's practice? What do you need physically, mentally, emotionally? And can you become the authority on that in your practice? So I'm simply here making suggestions, but you become the architect, the person who really puts in all the detail to everything that we do. Your pranayama can be done supine and it is alternate nostril breathing. Take your left hand and bend in the index and the middle finger. You will be closing off your left nostril Inhaling through the right side for a count of eight. Holding the breath, closing both nostrils with thumb and ring finger, holding for eight. Exhaling through the left side, blocking the right nostril, exhaling for eight. Then reverse, inhaling left, holding, exhaling right. We'll start this together. If you're congested or blocked in the nose, you can do this through the mouth, but don't worry about any of the actions of your hand. If you're doing alternate nostril, close off your left nostril, but exhale through your mouth until you're completely empty. Inhale through the right side for eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Hold your breath using thumb and ring finger to close the nostrils, holding for eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Exhale through left for eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale through left for eight. As you do this inhalation, lift the rib cage and slide it away from your pelvis. If you're on the bolster, almost thinking about telescoping your ribs back. Hold your breath. Thumb and ring finger are holding the nostrils so that you can soften your throat, your jaw, your diaphragm. Then exhaling for eight, but aiming to get the same volume of air coming out through each count rather than the majority in the first four counts. That was one round going from right to left and left to right. Do one more full round. As you do this, you can continue asking what your needs are right now. And is there a way that you can meet them in this pose? If you finish early, simply release the hand down and return to a steady breath. Checking in after doing alternate nostril, what it feels like to get that really expansive breath. Roll onto your left hand side, use your arms to bring yourself up. Now, if you're using a bolster and you had it in this configuration, we're going to use that straight away. Getting into the mid and upper back, especially, really useful, but we will be coming back then to lay down. If you don't have any props, you can do this fully without. So, I'm going to show you with the props. If you're working with props, then you're taking the legs into a 90 degree stance, so right knee is standing out, left leg is out to the side and turning the chest away from the legs, perhaps taking the arm underneath. This can be done flat down, so without the block, so you can use your hands to assist. If you do not have those items, then you can actually take your left arm underneath your right and come down onto this without the props. You should feel that you're getting some feedback, kind of moving in from the mid back upwards. So if you're using props, go ahead and set them up or keep them set up as they were. Line up your right hip with the bolster, the so right side of pelvis. Now you might be a little bit more upright where you're closer to your sit bone. If you scoop that right hip towards the front of the mat and get onto your greater trochanter, widest boniest part of your thigh, that's going to be useful. The left leg, send it back. If you get any pinching in that leg, you can work with that leg straight and see if that makes a difference when we get into it. Turn your chest down towards the bolster. You want to feel that your abdomen is in contact with it. If you're doing the one with the block, left arm threads underneath, look to the right and use a press through your right palm to help create a little bit of the lift in the right ribs. If you don't have the space underneath, reach the left arm long away from you. If you're doing it on the ground, left arm is going underneath the right arm. Come back to that inhale for five and exhale for seven. Notice what happens if you allow the abdominals to move, recruiting the abdominal pressure to pry open some of the really stuck places in the mid, maybe even upper back. If it feels like you're going really, really deep, this point in this class and even in this class, that's not really the idea. And you tread gently and become the authority on how far you're going. One of the wonderful things about lockdown is the sense of competition in this yoga studio isn't there. No one else can see you. There's nothing to prove if there ever was in your mind the thought that there was. Inhale, bring yourself up. Turn yourself around. So rolling through the hips. Setting up that left hip against the bolster. Draw the left side of the pelvis down, perhaps right leg is straight, 
and then turning the chest down towards the bolster. Right arm can go either underneath or alongside, or if you're flat down and there's no bolster, then you can work the right arm underneath the left to get into the right shoulder a little bit more. I like to keep a bit of a press through my left palm so I feel that lifting up through the left ribs. And a good practice, I think, in poses where you are not immediately going to fall over is to close your eyes. So I know for myself, digitally, I am using screens more than ever and I don't like it. So when I'm practicing and I get to close my eyes and simply not connect to a screen, do so. So yes, you're being guided by a screen. You don't need to stare at it all the time, even though your brain really wants you to. Alright, inhale, ease yourself up from there. Set the bolster to the side, so if you were using any props it's good to have a bit of a clear runway. You're coming back down onto your back for some hip mobility, so we've done a little bit of this twist into the mid back, it's my hope that this will pave the pathway to free up through your lower back a little bit more. So come down onto your back, take the feet, so I'm going to turn around because I'm getting blinded by the sunshine. How terrible. <laughs> Take the feet so they are mapped distance apart. The angle of the legs is about 90 degrees between shin and thigh bone. Arms are either straight out to the side or you can have the hands clasped behind your head if your shoulders are happy enough with that. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, send both knees over to the left. The right sit bone will lift off the floor. Press down through the inside of that right leg. Inhale, bring the knees up through center. Exhale, send the legs over to the right. Inhale, bring the knees back up through center. So moving one breath per movement. Exhale, send the legs to the left. So bear in mind this is active rather than floppy. Inhale, knees come up through center. Exhale, send the legs to the right. Pressing down, especially through the inside of that left thigh. Inhale, bring the knees back through center. Exhale, send legs left. Now lift your head and shoulders up, so have a little look towards your left leg, hopefully it's still on the left hand side of your yoga mat. On your inhale, send that left leg sliding towards the front of your mat, so pinky toe is still down. Exhale, slide the leg back in, so you're just flexing the hip and working with a bit of resistance that comes from friction, put the head back down. Inhale, slide that left leg out, exhale, pull the leg back in. Inhale, slide the leg out. Exhale, pull back in. So now that it's in, perhaps you can lift it and cross it over your right thigh. It is possible to exit the pose, cross the foot over and come back in. You just need to be very aware of your tolerance and depth for that. So if your leg wasn't willing to lift to get it in there, just see how willing it is to be there if you've chosen an alternate route. Inhale, bring your knees back up through center. Exhale, send the knees over to the right. Checking that right foot is in line with your yoga mat. Curl your hip and shoulders up just so you can see the first round. Inhale, send that right leg towards the front of your mat. Pinky toes are still down, so you're still rotated. Exhale, glide that leg back in. Inhale, slide the leg long. Exhale, ease it back in. Head goes down. Inhale, reach with that leg. Exhale, slide it back in. So you're just starting to train that hip to move a little bit, but also warming up the hip joint. And the next time the leg comes back in, cross it over the left thigh, so assisting by adding some weight to that left leg. You can choose the scenic group, which is coming back up, hooking the foot, and then allowing the leg to come back in. But I would say put the brakes on so you don't go further than you would like. And it's a good lesson to learn in this class. If you move slow enough and ponderously, it's not that you're going to get left behind, but you will have time to navigate the sensations of the poses. All right, now that right foot, unhook it. Inhale, bring the knees back in through center. 
Now, from this place, I'll flex your feet so your ball of the foot is off the ground, heels are down, roll both knees in and allow the knees to touch one another. Spill your pelvis forward so you're arcing into your back. You can use your head to push on your thighs to affect a bit of a back traction here. And then explore, does it feel good to have your back? Is there back bending a little bit here where the lower back is rounding? Or does it feel better for you to press your low back down? So simply feeling a bit of an internally rotated back traction. From here, bring the knees into your chest. Moving into single leg, laying down spinal twist. Straighten your right leg towards the front of your mat. Left knee is coming into the chest, but press your pelvis down. Take a deep breath in, right hand stays where it is, take the left arm out to the side, exhale, twist to the right. Instead of just moving your thigh across your body, endeavour to turn so you're on the right greater trochanter. Sometimes I need to pick my pelvis up and move it an inch or two to the left, just so I feel like I'm in line, to help create that twist. Your left shoulder being off the ground isn't a problem, but feel for rolling the rib cage to the left rather than trying to force your shoulder blade down. If you want a little bit more, if the right arm comes up and reaches to the left, you can create a little bit of an additional twist into the upper and mid back, so similar to what we were doing with the bolster. Inhale, bring the leg back up through centre, chain legs, bring the right knee into your chest. Left leg straightens away from you, flex the right foot. Take a deep breath in, exhale, carry that leg over to the left, perhaps moving the left hip over to the right, maybe an inch or two as that leg comes over, simply so that you're not just squeezing the thigh inwards, but there is a genuine movement of the pelvis. The right arm can reach to the right or overhead or alongside your waist, whatever feels more comfortable for that shoulder. But you can create a bit of an additional twist by reaching with that left arm over. If that feels like too much or you're relying on your hand on your leg, then keep the hand there. Use your deep breathing to help explore where you're at with the pose. Inhale, bring the right knee back through centre. Roll onto your left hand side. Use your arms to come up from the ground. For the next pose, you're going to have your leg elevated or at least your ankle elevated. So you need a block or, or a roll or your bolster, whatever you have to hand. I think my bolster just goes right there. Set up the prop at the back of the mat. So if you don't have anything, uh, books, cat, like a stack of wood, whatever you've got. The left ankle is going to go onto there, and then lining up the left heel, the left hip, and the left hand, and then getting off of the buttock more onto the widest boniest part of your thigh. So again, it seems to be a greater toe counter class. Right leg is coming up and over, and then adjusting so you feel like that right leg is coming down. The left hand needs to be out in front of the line of the left shoulder to protect the wrist, but also to give you the advantage to allow your shoulder to slide up. So this pose is a deep side bend. So my low back sensitive people, this one move very carefully in. So take your time getting in, avoid any jerky movements, anything that feels really fast or abrupt. Slow breath, gentle movement of the abdomen and time. That's what's gonna help with this one. So allow yourself to just be here. Any pinching in right side low back, you can send that right leg further away and just give yourself a little bit of space. You can even use your forearm to help traction out through that side of the back if that's necessary. Or you put the hand down on the ground for balance. All right, swap that around. So you can either turn around or I'm turning around so that I can still speak to you. As much fun as it is to speak looking out the window. I feel like I need to stay connected to you somehow. So lining up right heel, right hip, right hand, left leg is coming over the top. I'm going to adjust myself so that I'm on the greater trochanter rather than on my butt. 
left leg is coming over the top. I do these poses a lot at the start of my practice, so what you're getting is very similar to what I would do in my own personal practice, so that what we do after this feels less inhibited, a little bit freer. So breathe in a way that moves the right ribs, right side of the abdomen, neck can relax, or you can let the head rest forwards, whatever feels good. Sometimes relaxed neck can even be that the head neck is upright, right? So I'm not, I don't feel like I'm straining my neck muscles. They're not overworking to keep my head up. So that might work fine for you. All right, then inhale, unravel from there. Make your way towards all fours. So if you need to clear your mat, go ahead and do that. And I say if you need to, you probably will need to. Come on to all fours. All fours, again, another place that is making up a fundamental part of my practice at present, even though it's relatively simple, is just getting the back muscles switching on in a different way. Toes tucked or feet flat is your preference. I've been enjoying toes tucked. Look forwards but draw your abdomen away from the ground. So your aim is to feel that there is a little bit of curve in the lower back. There's definitely an upward curve between the shoulder blades and a curve in the back of the neck. Dropping your head down here makes everything in the upper back and shoulders have to work so much harder. So let's not go for that. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, draw your left hand and your right knee off of the floor. So you're not bending them or moving them to the side. You're simply drawing them up. Inhale, set that down. Exhale, lift right hand, left knee, ideally both at the same time. Inhale, set those down. Do this without moving the pelvis. Exhale, lift, left hand, right knee. Inhale, release down. Exhale, lift right hand, left knee. Inhale, release down. Exhale, left hand, right knee, so switching. Inhale, release. Exhale, lift right hand, left knee. Inhale, release. Exhale, lift left hand, right knee. Inhale, soften. Exhale, lift right hand, left knee. Inhale, soften. In this position, actively tilt the pelvis. So tuck tailbone is kind of what I would say when we pull the pelvis downwards and round the back. Instead, when you tilt the pelvis, see if you can stick your butt out so you get that lifting up action through sit bones, a little bit of curve in the lower back. Look forwards, deep breath in. Maintain this much tilt, exhale, move your hips back. So if you start to curl under, you've got to move it too far. Inhale forwards. So I like this to kind of warm up the hips. Exhale, lean the hips back. Inhale forwards. Exhale, move the hips back. Inhale forwards. Exhale, move the hips back. Inhale forwards. Take your hands forwards. From here, say forwards a lot in this class. Pelvis stays above the knees. Allow the chest to hang down. Wrist sensitive, see what happens if you set your elbows down and turn your palms to face up. You will get the same chest opener, but it'll be less offensive for your wrists and your hands if they're feeling fatigued already. Chest is hanging down, maybe setting the chin down. So back bending is something we haven't done a huge amount of in this class yet. We haven't even done bridge. So you're thinking about opening up the chest, easing into the hips a little bit and going steady, going easy on it. So especially if this is like the only class you get to do and you're thinking, I need to get more bang for my buck, I need to get everything for the week done, that doesn't work well. Ask, what do you need right now? It's probably not that you need to fix absolutely everything right now or else there's never gonna be another chance that you get to do this. There will be. All right, inhale, bring yourself up from there. Sit back onto your heels and be a little bit nearer to the back of your mat. So you need to have um, at least an arm span forwards for the next part. When we get into this flow series, this is called a moon salutation, that's why I call it a moon salutation. You're either gonna be kneeling, which is useful. If you can't kneel because of growly knees, does sitting on a block, help that, so anything that can help open up the angle of the knees and shift the weight can take the pressure out of the knee joint. So that might mean that you're sitting elevated. You can even sit on the bolster. Obviously, when we start moving, you need to like disconnect from the bolster and walks at certain points. So it will feel a little bit faffy, but it's 
better than hurting your knees more. In this kneeling position, endeavour to very slightly stick your butt out and lift your chest up. Draw your shoulders down away from your ears, set the palms to face up. Get the weight of the shoulders above the hips and then close your eyes. Reconnect in with deep breathing and focus as if this was the start of practice. So the other things are almost like a preamble. We could have started in this position, but we didn't. We did some other stuff first. Check in if the needs of the body have shifted or changed. Maybe some of them have even been addressed. Who knows? Inhale, bring the arms up, lift your rib cage up. Child's pose. Exhale, hands are coming down, slide your hands forward, set your forehead down. Tabletop. Inhale, move your shoulders in front of yours. It's actually more like a plank position than it is tabletop. Downward facing dog. Exhale, tuck your toes, lift your knees up, and pause in downward facing dog. That is a hilarious joke, you're welcome. From this place, start to take a little bit of a bend in one leg and then the other, but don't neglect your feet, so get really high up on those toes, stretching into the feet. So it's not just about your legs, your hamstrings, or your back, you can also start to wake up that foot pliability. Alright, cat. Inhale, set your knees down, shoulders above the wrists, arc the skull upwards, arc the sit bones upwards. Exhale, press the hips back towards the heels, back into child's pose. Inhale, slide the hands back in, bring the arms up, lift chest. Exhale, bring hands together at chest. We're going to add in an extra piece of this. Inhale, come up to standing on the knees, making sure your shins are parallel, because obviously child's pose, sometimes the feet will have drifted in towards each other. Go for parallel or tuck the toes. I prefer a tuck toe because I can push down a wee bit more. Exhale to tuck your tailbone down. You should feel that's kind of like pressing your hips forward a little bit. Bring your hands onto your breastbone, so onto heart center. Inhale to lift your chest and your hands. So don't try and like move your hands. Lift your chest up. It's a physical thing you can definitely do. Lean the head back a little, but tuck the chin. Inhale, lift your chest into your hands. Exhale, tuck tailbone down, push into your feet. Inhale, lift back up. Exhale, sit back onto your heels, perhaps staying with toes tucked. So at the end of the salutation, we add in that sort of hands-free camel just to wake up your legs a little bit more and bring in a little bit of quadricep awareness. Inhale, bring the arms up. Child's pose. Exhale. Tabletop, inhale, bring the shoulders above the wrists. Downward facing dog, exhale. Cat, inhale, set the knees down, lift skull, lift sit bones. Exhale, press hips back towards heels. Now, inhale, lift all the way up. So you come all the way up, so it's a bit of a, like a deadlift style action as you come up. Bring the hands together onto chest. Inhale, telescope rooms up. Exhale, tuck tailbone down, lift your chest into your hands. Inhale, lift back up. Exhale, sit the hips back down towards heels. Maybe again, sitting back onto the block. Inhale, bring the arms up. Child's pose. Exhale. Tabletop. Inhale, shoulders above wrists. Downward facing dog. Exhale. Cat. Inhale, knees down, lift skull, lift sit bones. Child's pose. Exhale. Inhale, come all the way up to standing on the knees. Hands on chest. Exhale, tailbone tucks down, lift breastbone up. Inhale, lift the chest back up. Exhale, sit the hips back towards the heels. Inhale, reach up. Child's pose. Exhale. Tabletop. Inhale, shoulders above wrists. Downward facing dog. Exhale. Cat. Inhale, knees go down, lift skull, lift sit bones, you get that arc into the back. Child's pose, exhale. Inhale, come up to stand, bring your hands onto your chest, then pause. Take a deep breath in, lift up through the front of the chest. Exhale, tuck tailbone down. As you inhale, allow the arms to simply open out, squeeze your shoulder blades back. Exhale, squeeze shoulders back, lift chest. 
Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, hands come together, chest. You're almost letting the action be an extension of where you were. So the chest is as open, but you've got these arms coming out to the side. So it's a small addition. Inhale, bring the arms up. Child's pose. Exhale. Tabletop. Inhale, shoulders above wrists. Downward facing dog. Exhale. Cat. Inhale, set the knees down, lift skull, lift sit bones. Child's pose. Exhale. Inhale, lift all the way up, coming back to standing on the knees. Exhale, open the arms out to the side, tailbone tucks down. Inhale, I like to bring the arms down to then come up to help lift the chest up. Exhale, sit the hips towards the heels. Move into a tabletop position. We're just going to make some hip circles because we're going to use these. So this is the, the kinesthetic mat for the next piece. Lift your right leg up, maintaining about a 90 degree bend in the leg, aiming for thigh parallel to the floor. The lower back usually dips when people lift that leg truly. So I want you to pull the abdomen in, but lift the leg so you're feeling your buttock muscle and then check, is the leg on straight? Worry less about the breath and get this feeling more um, cyclical. Exhale, bring the knee down without moving your pelvis and squeeze it towards your arm. Inhale, open the leg out to the side and rotate it back to the start position. So it's kind of a two piece one for today. Exhale, the knee is coming down and towards your arm. Inhale, open out to the side, back and around. So aim to do this without moving right side, lower back, or this sort of up and down action. Exhale, knee towards the arm. Inhale, open out to the side and back. One more. Exhaling down. Inhaling to the side, up and back. All right. Changing sides. Inhale, lift the left leg up. Work that leg straighter, so don't go into it quite yet. Flex the foot, level the hips. Draw the abdomen away from the mat, but lift that left leg. Exhale, bring the knee down and towards the arm. Inhaling to open the left leg out to the left without lifting your left buttock and rotate back through center. So we're taking the hip through this ring. Exhale, bring the knee down and towards your arm. Inhale out to the side, up and around. Exhale downwards. Inhale, open the knee out to the side, up and round. Exhale, bring the knee down. Inhale out to the side and rotate back to center. Last one. Exhale, bring the knee down, squeeze the knee towards your left arm. Inhale, open up to the side and up and round. Exhale, set that down. So when we arrive into downward dog in this next slope, we're going to do the same thing. In down dog, your range might feel a little bit more accessible. If down dog is tough to be in for your wrist, because we're doing three rounds one way, three rounds the other way, so that's six breath counts, feel free to do this dolphin hands clasp, so you're taking the weight onto your forearms. Inhale, bring the arms up. Child's pose, exhale. Tabletop, inhale, shoulders above wrists. Downward facing dog, exhale. Again, feel free to take this on elbows. Inhale, lift the right leg up, so you're bending the leg at 90 degrees. Exhale, bring the knee in towards your chest. Inhale, rotate out to the side. So two more circles. When you finish those two, bring the left leg up. Inhale, lift that left leg up. Leg is bent about a 90 degree angle. Exhale, bring the knee down. Inhale, open it out to the side and lift it up and back, straightening the leg up. Exhale, down. Do one more after this. Cat. Inhale, set the knees down, lift skull, lift sit bones. Exhale, press hips back towards heels. Inhale, come all the way up to standing, hands come to the chest. Exhale, tuck tailbone down, reach the arms out. Inhale, bring the arms down to lift up. Exhale, hands together at chest. If you're going to be using a block, it may be useful to have that near to the front of the mat unless you are sitting on it, so especially when you get to the next piece. Inhale, bring the arms up. Child's pose. Exhale. Tabletop. Inhale, shoulders above wrists. Downward facing dog. Exhale. Look to your left hand. Lunge. Bring your left knee in towards your chest. Shift into more of a plank, but lift high on your right tiptoes and step the left foot outside the hand. Either come up onto your fingertips or you can put your hands on your block, but lower the hips here. 
So maybe it's helpful to have your hands elevated. Maybe it feels okay once your hips are done. You use your right foot. So again, working that foot pliability of rocking forwards and back, easing into the hips a little bit. Set the knee down, but without going soft. So I want you to stay active here. Exhale, tuck your tailbone down so your right buttock muscles are firing up and scoop your chest forwards. Stay quite elevated. Even if you know that you can go lower in your arms, stay upright for now. Inhale, squeeze your hands towards your hips to help create a bit of a cobra sensation. Your right leg isn't going to go anywhere, but squeeze it towards the front of the mat. Take another deep breath. Exhale, soften the musculature a little bit, and then see if there's a way to take the hands forwards, perhaps coming down onto the elbows. Take care, this pose is really easy to convince yourself you've gone really far when the right hip drops down. Instead, to help you stay a little bit more level, lean the weight more towards that left foot and square off your pelvis. Chest is lengthening forwards. It might mean that your elbows are on a block or on some kind of a support, so see what feels good for you here. You might even feel just relaxing into the legs is enough without having to change the arm position. And you would be right. If you're down on the elbows, come back up onto your hands. Hands are underneath the shoulders, tuck the right toes. Now you're going to create essentially down dog, but that left leg is forward, so it feels like pyramid. Lift super high on the right toes. You see that's lifting my pelvis up and then pull the left foot back into downward facing dog. Look to your hands, deep breath in. Exhale, bring the right knee forward. Stay high on the tiptoes so you get that pelvis lift. Stepping the right foot outside the hand. Toes point forwards, set your left. Oh no, don't take your left knee down yet. Take some movement forwards and back through that left eye. So just getting that scrub into the hip. So the foot is doing the majority of the work, getting that lever action. Then set the knee down, scoop the rib cage forwards and draw your shoulder blades down. So this one is active. Right sit bone and left are somewhat level. Chest is scooping forward, skull is lifting. Exhale, tuck tailbone down, squeezing left buttock muscles. Now if you're just squeezing your buttock muscles to make them tense, it's not quite the same thing. The tailbone is tucking down, the buttock muscles are active because of that, and then squeeze your left thigh towards the front of the mat. That should sweeten the deal a little bit. And then from this place, start to come down, maybe taking the hands further forward. So things are relaxing and softening a little bit perhaps coming down onto the elbows themselves. See what feels good here. If you're not going further, for my wrists, just because my wrists are feeling a little bit growly today, I'm turning my hands to point back. So fingers are pointing towards my left foot. But my chest is still coming forward to see if that feels good for you too, if that's where you're staying. If you're down on the elbows, bring the hands back in, hands are under the shoulders, tuck the left toes so you're pressing into something that feels more like pyramid. Lift high on the left toes so you can lift the pelvis and then step that foot back into downward facing dog. Cat, inhale knees down, lift skull, lift sit bones. Exhale, press the hips back towards your heels, child's pose. Inhale, come all the way up to stand on the knees, hands together chest. Exhale, tuck tailbone down and open the chest up. Inhale, bring the arms up. Exhale, hands come together at chest. Inhale, reach up. Child's pose. Exhale. Tabletop. Inhale, shoulders above wrists. Downward facing dog. Exhale. Now, looking at your left foot, toes stay pointing down. Lift the left leg up, but endeavor to have your hips level. Left toes point down, left knee points down. Lift up through the left upper thigh. This should help, if you visualize that thigh bone lifting, help you feel the muscles switching on. Lunge, exhale, step the foot inside the hand. So if that's tricky, yes, step it to the outside and then just maneuver it. 
Turn your feet to the right and walk your hands around. Hands are underneath the shoulders. Coming into a straddle forward bend. Perhaps legs are bending. Inhale, scoop your chest towards the right side of the mat. Exhale, pivot the chest down, but point your buttocks up towards the ceiling. So you're doing tilt in the pelvis. Perhaps you're folding the arms and the arms can rest down, maybe taking the arms through. You might find being on the hands and articulating into the pelvis is allowing you to get into the hamstrings without really having to go anywhere or around the lower back. I find it very useful to keep the lower back really spacious rather than excessively rounding it and calling it depth. The next pose is very similar to the deep side bend we did at the start. So I want you to register that it is a side bend. The chest isn't going to twist, but walk both hands towards your left foot. Right hand holds the left ankle, left hand goes outside the foot. Now instead of twisting, your aim is that your collarbones are staying facing the left side of the mat, lean the rib cage to the right and bend the right elbow aiming to create a side bend sensation from right underarm to the right hip, pushing from the left hand to send the weight to the right. The twist isn't there, but it is a side bend. And the legs can be as bent as is necessary. Inhale, release the hands grip, walk the hands around, hands are either side of that foot, Use the lifting of the right toes to help lift the hips up. Left thigh is squeezing towards your ribs. Squeeze the heel to the butt and step the bent leg back. Right toes are staying pointing down. Inhale, lift the right leg up. Toes point down, chest presses back. Endeavor to lift up through the right thigh bone. Exhale, wrap shoulder blades towards the underarms. Remember, this can be done as dolphins. So again, wrist sensitive people, feel free to do that. Lunge, exhale, shift forwards into plank, lift the left hip to the left hip toes and get that right foot coming down between the hands. From this place, turn the right foot to the right, no, nope, to the left, don't turn your right foot to the right, something terrible will happen. Turn to the left, hands are in line underneath your shoulders. Inhale, scoop the chest towards the left side of your mat. Exhale, bend the elbows, coming into straddle forward bend, perhaps you're using your arms and your legs to assist. You can get a little bit of a pull. Wrist sensitive, I find reaching through and doing palms up and then gently pulling my arms back towards my shoulders gives a little bit of a wrist traction. Hopefully feeling the same for you. Flank stretch. Walk the hands over towards your right leg. Right hand is going outside the right foot. Left hand outside the right ankle. Turn your collarbones so they're both facing the right side of your mat. Inhale, lean the left ribs to the left. Exhale, bend the left elbow. So the underside, this side here, is moving away from my right leg, arcing towards the left leg. This right hand can push to create a little bit more action into that. So see if that feels relevant. Inhale, walk your hands back around either side of that right foot, lift to your left hip toes. Hips are high, exhale, squeeze the heel towards the butt and then step back. Cat, inhale, knees go down, lift skull, lift sit bones. Exhale, press the hips back towards the heels. Inhale, come up to standing on the knees, bring the arms up. Exhale, bend the arms this time. So squeeze your shoulder blades back, so cactus arms. Inhale, lift the arms up. Exhale, sitting down. So still working in that flow. Inhale, bring the arms up. I really like it as a framing device. Child's pose, exhale. Tabletop, inhale, shoulders above wrists. Downward facing dog, exhale. Inhale, lift the left leg up, toes point down, and then deliberately turn the foot out without lifting the hip, and lift the left leg up. This turned out position feels quite different. 
Exhale, step the left foot through between your hands, pause. Take your hands to the inside of that left foot. Line up your right heel with your left arch. Nope, left arch. No, nope, left heel with your right arch. My gosh. This heel with the back arch. Begin to work towards triangle. So left leg is straightening, right arm is lifting. Perhaps triangle today is looking like it's a little bit taller. Perhaps hands are on the shin. My hypermobile folks take extreme care with this left knee. If it's locking, see if you can soften it and engage the quadriceps. You get a little bit more activity here. Inhale, roll the right ribs open, shoulders and shoulder blades down. Exhale, press into your feet so it is active. We have been working side bends, twists, hip opening. This should feel like a really sweet pose. I hope. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, bring the right hand onto either your lower back or your right hip. Bend the left leg and set the palm to the inside of your thigh. Bend into that leg like warrior two, and then reach the right arm up. Extended warrior. If this feels like it is really strong or you're getting any pinching in your hip, come up into extended warrior variation, which is left forearm on the thigh. Still a resolute engagement of the left leg, just slightly less. Or at least it is more spacious in that left hip joint. Inhale, release your hands down. Flip the right heel up. Now as before, lift to the right tiptoes, press off that left foot, bring that leg back. Right toes point down, inhale, lift the right leg up. Exhale, rotate the right leg without lifting the right hip, but lift the thigh. Feeling the change in the area of the buttock muscles that is engaging to help you lift. Exhale, bring the right foot through in between the hands. Hands come to the inside. The right foot stays where it is. Move your left foot over to the right. So the right heel is in line with the left arch. There we go, we got it this time. Right hand can stay down as you work the leg straighter, moving into triangle, perhaps hand on shin or further up on, or on any props that you wish. Inhale, lengthen your ribcage towards the front of your mat. Exhale, draw your right sit bone towards your left. So there's a little bit of a drawing under sensation happening. Actively push into both feet. Either moving into extended warrior, which is bending the right leg, so this is the variation, or right hand down to the inside of the leg. Sometimes I like if I'm already in triangle to bend into that and see how the shape evolves. Check in more honestly with what you need today versus what seems like or you have been told is deeper than the other. Sometimes my brain is saying that it wants to go really far, but my body says it would be really nice to not have hip compression right now, and I tend to listen. It usually does. Inhale, set your hands down, flip that left heel up. Use your left toes to help lift the hips. Inhale, step the foot back. Cat, deep breath in, set the knees down, lift skull, lift sit bones. Exhale, press the hips back towards the heels. Inhale, come up into that camel. Bring the arms all the way up to help you lift the ribcage. Exhale, tuck tailbone down, squeeze your shoulder blades back. Inhale, bring the arms up. Exhale, hands come together at chest. One more round. Inhale, lift the arms up. Child's pose, exhale. Tabletop, inhale, shoulders above wrists, downward facing dog, exhale. This time, exhale, squeeze your left knee into your chest, you're still in down dog. Keep it really close to your chest as you bring it forwards and step the left foot outside the left hand. Right knee is underneath the pelvis, draw the left side of your pelvis down and lengthen your lower back by doing the action of sticking your butt out. 
right hand is down. This is very much stage one. And it's inhaling to open the left arm to the side and rotate the chest, but not the lower back. So if your pelvis goes, you're no longer really twisting. Think about pelvis being level, low back being long, and turn. This is option number one. Option number two, that same arm is going to slide down to the outside of the right leg. It puts a bit of pressure on the elbow. So if you've got elbow wrist stuff, you might find that is not assisted by this pose and opening the chest to the left. See what feels good here. Pigeon, inhale, release from the twist. Pick up your foot rather than doing like a heel toe thing and set the shin at about a 90 degree bend, right leg walks back. Now, in this position, as you come in, you can be a little bit off center, so especially if the knee joint is squarely, and then lean towards the leg. More flexible day, square off the hips, push down through the left leg, and begin to move forwards in a similar way to what we were doing in the lunge. So that might mean pulling with the arms, it might mean staying up high. It may be coming down onto the elbows. If you are on the elbows, avoid extreme flex in the back. Instead, scoop the rib cage forwards. I like to have my right toes tucked just because the weight always lands on my kneecap here. I like to keep it hovering. Inhale, come back up onto hands. The step back from pigeon is not the most glamorous, so get that right knee underneath, left leg is pulling through, press into downward facing dog. It should feel like you have two rather different legs. Looking at the hands, exhale, bring the right knee into your chest, carry that forwards, and then step it down in between your hands. Left knee is under the pelvis, left hand is down. Right side of the pelvis lowers, and then lower back lengthens. Inhale, twist the right arm to the right, or hook the left arm outside the leg, opening this up. This one requires a little bit more space. Sometimes it can feel good to move the abdominals a bit, especially if it feels like your ribs are getting stuck on your leg, and also any chest tissue out of the way. Whichever pose you're doing, deepen your breath, phenomenally so. Pigeon. Inhale, release the hands. Use your hands to move that right leg over to the side and coming down more onto the greater trochanter. Right leg is at 90 degrees, perhaps leaning in towards that leg. If you're able to square off a little bit more, this will help you come down towards the elbows or at least be a little bit more straight in line with your mat. You can stay up on hands or staying on the elbows, scooping the chest forwards. Again, I've got my left knee slightly hovering. It helps me keep the leg more active and again, stops the weight pouring down into that left knee. So you might find it's useful if you're squaring off. If squaring off is too much, then stick with a non-squared off version. You can still get a lot out of that hip. It's a very similar sensation to Baddha Konasana. Inhale, come back up onto hands, swing your left leg around. You are coming down for Shavasana, final relaxation pose. That might mean that you are using some of the props you had earlier, or if you have a favorite Shavasana pose that you like to do, then feel free to do that. I'm a big fan of um, the symmetry of finishing a class where we started. So I'm going to do that. So choose a position that will be comfortable for you. So it might be laying down. It might be laying down on your abdomen, if that feels really good for your back. Sometimes after hip opening, that can be a really good choice. Choose a position where you can be comfortable. Take the time to ask internally, what do you need right now? Maybe it is an extra support under your head, shoulders pulling down, 
or even a blanket. Maybe you need some extra warmth. Part of the relaxation response is the blood moving from the extremities into the core for digestion and repair. So you do cool down. Begin to deepen your breath. Come back to that awareness of self that allows you to observe how your body is now. As you come back to awareness, start to deepen the breath more deliberately, taking some movement into your fingers and your toes. If you're laying on your back, bend the legs and set the feet to the ground. Roll to your left, just being mindful of any prop height changes. And use your arms to make your way up towards seated. Feeling free to take any props. Seated cross-legged isn't necessarily something we've done very much of today. Or at all. Bring your hands together at chest, spreading the hand bones. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, bow forwards. Namaste. Thank you for joining me for class, folks. You can either unmute yourself or I'm going to try this button. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. That was great, family. You're welcome. Thank you. You're very welcome. Have a lovely day, folks. Try and get some sunshine. Yeah, you too, Billy. I shall. All right. Yes, hopefully. And Anne, lovely to have you from Kathmandu. Thank you. Very sunny here, Billy, but it's been pouring rain, so now the sun's out. So. Is it? Is it the rain season? It's monsoon now, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah it's, it's more humid, but yeah, once it rains, it's really lovely. Yeah. It's about 25, 25 degrees, so it's, you know, it's okay. Lovely. <laughs> lovely. Well, we're, no, we're nowhere near those temperatures, but, you know, <laughs> we've also had our monsoon season. Nice <laughs> 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 monsoon. <laughs> All, right, All right, folks, have a good day. Yeah, bye. Bye, Kristen.